Hey y'all, today's tech tip is a little bit different than something that I normally do, and it's for a different audience than I normally film these tech tips for. If you're a direct sales representative and you use the direct sales company's shopping cart system and you're looking for a way to link that to an email newsletter list so you can send out a welcome series or so you can get them on your list, then this is the way for you to do it. This can also work with all other selling systems as well. Teachable, Teachery, Shopify, anything like that, this will work. However, you do need to make sure you're not violating the terms of your company or the shopping cart system that you're using that you don't collect the customer's email addresses. I do know that Etsy restricts this, so if that's what you're using this for, definitely don't do that. Um, but this is a really nice way to be able to get people's orders from email to newsletter lists. So you can send them a welcome series if you want to or just however you want to filter them in. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, you want to create a Zapier account. Zapier is basically like a formula software, so it links things together to, that don't natively link together, and it is awesome. Um, they do have a free plan. I am on it. I think it allows up to five active zaps and then allows those zaps to work a certain amount of times per month, um, but it's always worked really well for me. So. You want to go create a Zapier account. It's just Z-A-P-I-E-R dot com. And um, then once you do that, you'll just leave that and go over to Gmail. So you do need to be using Gmail to make this work um, the way I'm going to show you, but there are ways around it as well. So what you want to do is go into your filters and blocked addresses. And I got here by using this little cogwheel and going to settings. So filters and blocked addresses create a new filter, and I want the subject notification of payment received. Now, um, this is gonna be different for everybody. So all of my sales come through PayPal when I sell a course or um, a strategy session or really anything. So all of my sales come from PayPal, and so that's the subject line that PayPal uses. So I'm good with using that as the filter trigger, I guess you could say. Um, if all of your emails from wherever you make your sales comes from another email address, so you know if you only get email addresses from sales at yourcompanyname.com when you make a sale, then you could easily use that as the filter here. But for me, I'm gonna use the subject line and I'm gonna hit create filter with the search. Now it's going to find all of the emails I have with that and I'm gonna select them all and hit more and create filter. Now that you have created a label for the emails that are coming in to be labeled that you just made a sale, then we want to, and you've made a filter so that it happens automatically. Um, if for whatever reason you can't get that filter to work, then um, you may have just selected too many or there might be too many emails. Gmail tends to be a little funky on this. So, um, but create the label with a filter so that you know that when someone is making a purchase and you get the subject line of your choice or the email sender of your choice that it's going to be labeled automatically. Okay, so now go back to Zapier and we're going to make a zap and we're going to make a Gmail zap and we are going to say new labeled email, okay? So you could also, if you can't get the labeling to work or whatever in your settings, you can also say new email matching search. So let's, I'm gonna show you both ways. So the search would be um, subject notification of payment received because that's what I see. So I'm going to show you both ways. So fetch and continue. It should find several emails and the test is successful. So continue. Now had that, had I not wanted to do it that way, 
um, then you could go in and say, you would have said, instead of new email matching search, you would have said matching label or new labeled email, and it would have worked the exact same way. Okay, so then what you wanna do is you want to take action. So on the trigger action, I want to use ConvertKit, but you can use MailChimp, it is available. Um, you can use, you know, really anything that they connect with. So I want to add a subscriber and you can choose here. So on ConvertKit, you can add them to a form, which would then put them possibly in a segment that would also possibly send them to a sequence. You can add them to a tag, so it doesn't actually do anything, but it adds them to your list and you know who they are because they're tagged, or you can add them to a sequence. So if you have a sequence set up where you want to be able to like thank people for the purchase and um, let them know what else you do, etc. You know, you can pick form or sequence, or if you just don't want to do anything, you can just hit tag. And I'm going to do that for this example because I don't want it to sling these people that may have purchased two months ago into a sequence. Okay, so save and continue. I want to connect my ConvertKit account. Okay, so it connected my ConvertKit account, and I want to hit save and continue. So now it's going to ask me what tag I want to add to these people. And I have a lot of random tags in here um, from my ConvertKit course. And then I also have some weird tags that I've tested out. So I am going to use just for the purposes of this customer. I mean, that works. Um, this is a tag I'd already set up for ConvertKit to do this natively from WooCommerce, which is the software I use. So now here, this one is going to be imperative. So when you created that search, it's going to show you out of this, the test that it pulled when it found this new email, all of these fields. So you're going to want to find the field that shows the person's email address. And um, here is the one that shows this customer's email address. It's not the PayPal because it would add PayPal to your email list. We don't want that. So we want that. And then you want to select their first name, um, which some of these may or may not have a first name. It's going to have a company name or a um, first and last name, just however you want to do that. So I'm just going to do this right here. And then I'm going to hit continue and create and continue. Okay, so finish, and I'm gonna name it um, customers to customer tag convert it from Gmail. That way I know what it is. I'm gonna turn it on, and I'm gonna see it in my dashboard. So uh, there it is. If I go into ConvertKit and I go to my subscribers, and I go down to customer, it hasn't shown anything yet um, because these zaps work in real time. They're not going to take your past customers and put them in there. So you want to make sure you know that. It's not going to take the people who you've already sold to and put them in there. It's going to do it from now on. So from now on, when you get an email that you either label or you've set up in Zapier with the correct subject line or the correct email to or from, then you will get it will get triggered and it will add them. So a few closing notes on this. You can make this easier on you in so many ways. So if you work with a direct sales company or you work with another shopping cart company, you can have an email address that the only place you ever use that email address is to receive notification that you've gotten a sale. So that would be another way to help the labeling. Um, of course, you can label in Gmail like I did, like I showed you in the beginning, or you can do it straight from Zapier like I showed you in this example. Um, there are just so many ways you can go about this, but it's a super fun way to get people on your list after they purchase and to put them into some type of sequence after they purchase. So they can easily go straight into a sequence. They've purchased. They're going to get an email that says, you know what? Thank you so much for purchasing from me. And for direct sales, this can be 
huge. So you can send them emails that say, thank you so much. This is what else I have to offer. If you'd like to be a representative, here's that information, et cetera, et cetera. So you can really use this to your advantage in so many ways. And I hope it helps all of you out there who need it.